that is the big picture of today. Energy equation. So, energy equation whatever we have been applying whether it was momentum or mass whatever was applied to system we are applying it for control only by using my E dot in minus E dot out plus E dot S t is equal to sorry E dot generated is equal to E dot S t. So, similarly here also the same thing we are going to do we are taking a small control volume and I am taking the change in the internal energy is equal to the heat transfer to the system and the work done on the system. Now, if I take that E change in the energy, what is that change in the energy? If I do the budget, always we do this budget, what is that here we are saying? What is that we are saying? There is net rate of heat energy increase in the control volume, something e, e is getting in and something E is getting out. So, how do I, if I take again a cuboid of delta x, delta y, delta z, we know this business quite well. So, I am not writing this on this. So, what is that which is entering? Mass into energy. So, rho u dy dz is mass flow rate into energy. What is getting out? Same Taylor series expansion. I do not think I need to write it again. So, we have been using left and right this. So, by now we are adept in this. So, rho E u d y d z plus del rho E u by del x into volume. Similarly, I can write in the y direction. I am not consciously writing this equation for z direction because it makes my equation quite huge. So, I want to keep it little minimal. So, I have put it only for x and y direction. If I take in the y direction, I have rho v d x d z which is the mass flow rate in the y direction and E. Similarly, I can apply for exit. So, now if I rate of energy increase within the control volume is del rho E by del T into d x d y d z getting in and getting out if I cancel out this, this will get cancelled out with this and this term. So, I am left out with del plus, plus is missing here, plus is missing here, plus del rho E u upon del x plus del rho E v by del y. So, what did we take care? D e we took care. Now, we have, so we, we will do some algebra here. Okay. Same term I am writing rho E plus rho E copy paste problem, whatever problem was there here, same problem because of copy paste. Okay. So, now if I expand this, if I expand this, I get rho del E by del T plus E del rho by del T blah, 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 blah. Is that okay? So, now if I rearrange that, if I rearrange that, what is this? What is this? Continuity equation. This is my, yes, Sukumaran, some problem? Second line, okay. There is a problem. First, rho del E by del T plus E del rho by del T. Is that okay? Plus E del rho U by del X plus rho U del E by del X. I am just taking two parameters, keeping one as constant and differentiating the other. Second term reverse. Is that okay? So, now if I expand that, so this is my continuity equation. So, this I can throw it out. I am left out with rho del E by del T plus rho U del E by del X plus rho V del E by del Y. If I take out rho, what is this? This is the total derivative of E. E. So, I have rho d E by d T. Okay. So, this energy is having the internal energy and also the kinetic energy. So, E plus U squared plus V squared actually plus W squared also should be there, but I am not taking W into consideration. That is why I am stopping here as U squared plus V squared by Okay. So, that is about the, so let us keep, let us keep this in the back of our mind. This is my d e, remember. Now, heat transfer, d q, I have to get to heat transfer. So, this heat transfer is straightforward, this heat transfer is by conduction. Conduction, we have done this already, this what we have done here is already familiar to us because this we have done in heat diffusion. So, what am I going to end up with? K del square T by del x square plus K del square T by del y square. I have not done that because I, to do that I have to make the assumption that K is independent of x and y. Is that okay? 
So, what is the term left out now? Energy is over, heat transfer is over, work done on this system. Who is doing work on my system? Who is doing work on my system? Pressure forces, normal stresses and the shear stress. Is that right? So, now let us take the rate of the work done by pressure. Is that ok? I know I am going fast, but these are all now very familiar because we have done this several times in momentum equation. All that I am doing is work done. So, what is work done? If I take the pressure, what is the what is the work done by pressure force? Force into velocity, force into velocity. Force is what in the x direction p into d y d z into velocity. Here it is gaining direction because of the velocity. Okay. So, p d y d z into velocity. What is getting out? If I apply Taylor series expansion, what will I get? The same term plus del u p by del x into d x d y d z. Similarly, I can do it in the y direction. So, what is left out? If I do the balance, this, 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 this term will get cancelled out and I am left out with minus del u p by del x plus del v p by del y into volume. Is that ok? What is this? This is the work done by pressure. So, same thing I will have to do for stresses. So, first let me take normal stresses. Normal stresses will be same as pressure, only thing is that the direction is different. So, if I, I will do the same thing sigma x x, sigma x x, sigma y y, sigma y y, I am going to end up del u by del x sigma x x plus del v by del y sigma. Is that ok? Now, shear stress, same thing for shear stress. Shear stress here is sigma x y u d x d z okay. and here it is taking negative sign because why is it negative? u is in the opposite direction. Okay. So, now here you take apply Taylor series expansion you have sigma x x plus del sigma x y or instead of writing this it might be appropriate to write this as actually consistently that is what in the mail professor Arun has sent today. So, instead of this we could we can write notation wise what is that I should write minus sigma x y u d x d z right ok in the top it will not now plus what it should be del by del by del del by del y del y of u sigma x y d x uh, sorry d y d x d z. Expansion of this is what is written here. You are getting me? I have skipped one step and gone here because my feeling was we are too, I have skipped this whatever I have written and expanded that here. If you expand that you will get this. I have skipped this because we are now familiar with it. So, if I expand all this in x and y directions, so I get del v sigma y x by del x plus del u sigma x y by del y d x d y d z is there always. So, now we budgeted work done by pressure, work done by normal stress, work done by shear stress. So, we have to now add all of them. So, if you do that, if you do that. So, rate of increase in E, rate of heat transfer, rate of work done by surface and body forces. Of course, body force also does work. So, what is the work done by a body force? F x into rho u, mass into velocity into body force. Is that right? So, now this is the whole lot of equation I get. Is that right? Yeah. So, let me take stock of each term. What is this term? I will randomly pick someone. Yeah, Balu Swami, quite young you look, that is why I have caught you. Yeah. So, what is this term? This is energy, energy, this is internal and kinetic energy. So, what are these two terms? Heat transfer by conduction. What is this term? Work done by pressure force. What is this term? Work done by normal stress x x y y work done by shear stress. What work done by body force in the x direction, 
work done by body force in the y direction. Z direction is there, imagine it would become still lengthier, so I have cut it short. Okay. So, now we have to do some rearrangement. Why are we? Again, I come back to my favorite question. Why are we doing? What are we doing and why are we doing? What are we doing? We are trying to derive energy equation. Why are we deriving energy equation? Okay, to answer this, we derived momentum equation and conservation of mass. Why did we derive this? To get the velocity distribution. Why do I need velocity distribution? Why do I need the velocity distribution? Fine, I have not even come to heat transfer. As on its own, why do I need velocity profile? What is the engineering interest of writing these equations? Okay, why, what do I do with that boundary layer thickness? What is my engineering? Yes, you said shear stress. Why am I interested in shear stress? I need to find the pressure drop, then only I can decide my pumping capacity. If I have to decide to how much pumping power that is whether I have to put a 0 0.5 HP pump or a 2 HP pump to pump from here to Pune let us say. If I have to decide that, who will decide that? The pressure drop will decide that, shear stress will decide that. How will I get that shear stress? Until and unless I have the velocity profiles. I cannot get those gradients, I cannot get the. So, engineering interest drives us to derive these equations. On the same note, okay, to, to emphasize, I want to emphasize, I like this. In fact, this, uh, this I have learned from Professor Bejan's book. He always reminds us what is the engineering interest of all these equations. So, the engineering interest of momentum equation and conservation of mass equation is, what is the engineering interest of this equation? To get the velocity profiles u v w and pressure. Once you get that, you can from this you can compute the gradients, right? That will, okay, gradients, let us write that gradients of velocities, that will fetch me shear stress, shear stress. If you have to relate now itself, what is shear stress? We non-dimensionalize shear stress in terms of kin friction factor C f equal to tau wall upon half rho u squared. u squared can be u infinity squared in external flow, u average squared in case of internal flow. To remind you, f equal to 4 C f f is Darcy friction factor, C f is skin friction factor or fanning friction factor. So, why do I need this shear stress? Why do I need this shear stress? For as ma'am told us, it is pumping power. The key for all of this is this. We need to emphasize this to the students. Otherwise, they will not understand why are we doing this equation? What is going on? They will get lost. Okay. That is why I said for every derivation in between, I have, me, I have tuned my mind. You see, I did not even plan. I landed up asking question, what am I doing? Because we tend to get lost in the derivation. We should not get lost ourselves. We should stop and ask ourselves. It is a digression, but the same question we will ask. Yes, how will I decide? In fact, the boundary layer concept itself came by Prantl because he was asked to uh, decide the blower capacity for blowing on one drying for a flat plate. Energy equation, what am I doing? What am I doing with the, why am I deriving energy equation? To get what? Temperature, Temperature distribution. What do I do with this temperature distributions? What do I do with this temperature distributions? What did you write for uh, velocity? After velocity, what did you write? Velocity gradients. Here you are interested in temperature gradients. Why? You want to get heat transfer coefficient. Let me remind you, what is tau wall for fluid mechanics? That is heat transfer coefficient. 
that is heat transfer coefficient for heat transfer. Tau wall is the resistance offered by my solid surface for the flow to happen. H is the resistance for the heat transfer to happen. You can think analogically very straightforward manner, no confusion on that score. Okay. So, H, what is H? You remember what was the H definition? Professor Arun had written very nicely minus k del T by del y at y equal to 0 upon T s minus T infinity. I cannot get H until H definition is not q double dash equal to H into T wall minus T infinity. H definition is this, he told us yesterday. So, I will get from the temperature gradients, I will get H, which we usually write in terms of Nusselt number, like I wrote tau wall in terms of C f or f. Okay. Now, why do I need H? Why do I need H? Now, you can answer heat flux or Q T wall. Why do I say heat flux or T wall? If you know heat flux, you can compute what would be the wall temperature it is going to attain. If the wall temperature attained is going to be more than the metallurgical limit, in your heat exchanger your wall temperature turns out to be let us say 1000 degree Celsius. You cannot, so you have to either increase your Reynolds number so that your H goes up so that the wall temperature <coughs> comes down. So, that is why, so why we are doing we should not lose sight of. This is pumping power or you can on the same note you can call it as maybe what can we call heat transfer rates maybe i think we will leave it like that okay so that's the that is the whole idea of doing this energy equation fine so that was good thing so this he this is done by vejan before deriving he does this okay okay so now this was our energy equation. Now, let us do some rearrangement. Why I reminded this equation do I see anywhere T? No. So, I have to reduce this equation so that I need to T is there, but still in E I have to write in terms of T. So, everything has to be energy has to be put in terms of T. So, momentum equation is given by this we have derived it yesterday Cauchy's equation it was called it is not I have not put for sigma x x, I have put, I have not put the velocity gradients. This is the, this is Cauchy's equation. Okay. So, now if I take, this was my, this is my rho d u d t. If I divide it by rho and multiply by u, please listen to me carefully, I am going to go fast. I am not going to take you along with me until you make a conscious effort to be with me. I am not going to take an extra strain because this is all algebra. There is no concept involved. So, that is why I am going to go fast. So, if I multiply by u by rho throughout, this is what I end up with. So, u d u d t I can write as d u squared by 2 and this is my right hand side. So, on the same note I can write v d v squared that is d v squared by 2. What is this? Y momentum equation. So, why am I doing this? If I add this, I will get u squared by 2 plus v squared by 2 and the right hand side. Is that okay? Now, this is my equation B and this is my equation A. So, why am I trying to do that is I want to get rid of this u squared plus v squared by 2. If I subtract B from A, B from A, A B is nothing but u squared plus v squared by 2 on the left hand side. So, I get A minus B d by d t equal to blah 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 blah. Is that okay? Huge equation, but it is not scaring us, it is not scaring us because we know what is each term. So, now d e by d t, now I will go ahead and substitute for sigma x x, sigma y y, sigma x y, I will substitute these equations. Okay. If I substitute that and call this whole term as phi, okay, it is called as viscous dissipation, I will discuss the importance of that little later. But if I substitute for all this for sigma x x, sigma y y, sigma x y which are there here and call that as phi, that phi turns out to be this. What is this? It is all, what is this? It is all gradients. What is del u by del x? Stretching, del v by del y, stretching in y direction. So, what is del u by del x? Sorry, 
no that is right, this is right, this is also stretching. What is this del u by del y? Angular deformation, angular deformation okay? and shear stress of course agreed. So, now if I write this, now I know that internal energy h equal to e plus, we know h equal to e plus p v, we write left and right. So, instead of writing v specific volume, I have written it as p by rho. Why am I doing this? Because once I get in terms of enthalpy, I can write enthalpy in terms of C p into T, then I can get my left hand side also in terms of temperature, all over the place there is temperature, that is the exercise I am doing. So, nothing great I am doing. So, d h by d t equal to if I take total derivative d e by d t plus d p by rho by d t. So, let me expand d of p by rho by d t equal to 1 by rho d p d t minus p by rho square d rho by d t. I have just differentiated, kept key p constant and rho constant. So, what is this d rho by d t? What is d rho by d t? What was my continuity equation? d rho by d t plus rho del dot v equal to 0. So, if I have to get d rho by d t, that d rho by d t equal to minus rho del dot v. So, that is what I have reminded you and written for d rho by d t as rho del dot v, which is here 2 d I am writing. So, del u by del x plus del v by del y, that is equal to 1 upon rho d p by d t plus p by rho blah blah blah. Okay. So, now let me substitute this here. So, what do I get? What do I get? What have I done? Can anyone explain me what have I done here in the next step? Because I tend to go fast, I will catch someone. Can you tell me what did I do in the next step? What am I trying to do? In the first step, I figured out what is d p by rho by d t. Why did I figure out d p by rho by d t? What did I do? I did, what did I tell in the previous equation? Let us go slow then. What did we write in the previous equation? What did we say? I am finding E in the left hand side. I want to replace this E as H minus P by rho. Is that right? No, but I have to take a total derivative of H minus P by rho. First, I have tried to find out the total derivative of P by rho. That is what I get. I, th I am sure all of you have got this. But now, what am I doing in the next step? I have done nothing. I have written, I have written the same equation which was there here, rewritten the same equation. I have done nothing. Now, my next step would be for d e by d t, I will write d h by d t minus d of p by rho by d t. So, that is d h by d t but minus d p by rho by d t becomes plus if I push it to right hand side and that is nothing but 1 by rho d p by d t plus p by rho del dot p. So, this is the conduction term, this is this term and this is the viscous dissipation term that is phi by rho because instead of writing this big thing all the time, I have written phi by rho plus plus this 1 by rho d p by d t plus p by rho del u by del x plus del v by del y. So, what do you see here? This term and this term gets cancelled out. What am I left out with? Now, it looks little small, okay? but the trick is I have written phi, that is why it is looking small, but still phi is a huge equation. Okay? So, d h by d t is equal to k by rho del square t plus 1 by rho d p by d t plus phi by rho. We have not achieved what we are supposed to achieve. What we are supposed to achieve now? Write for h c p t. So, if I take c p t and take c p is constant, so I get rho c p d t d t, rho c p d t d t plus k del square t plus d, d p by d t plus phi. Let us write this equation. Come on. At least final equation we are supposed to write. So, what do I get? rho c p rho c p d t d t is equal to k into del square t by del x square plus del square t by del y square plus d p by d t plus phi. Okay? Plus phi. What will be? Let us expand 
the first term on the left hand side rho C p into can anyone expand this? We have done this n number of times yesterday. Del t by del small t. Yeah, del t by del small t plus u into del t by, u into del, t by del, x. del x, very good, plus v into by del y, actually plus w by w del t by del z, but I am not taking w, so that is why that is not there, is equal to k into del square t by del x square plus del square t by del y square plus I would like to keep d p by d t as it is d p by d t plus phi. What is? Okay, now, let us take each one. Let us take each one. What is the left hand side term? What is the left hand side term? Convective term. It is a material derivative of my temperature. So, this is the temperature variation for unsteady that is transient temperature distribution, this is unsteady and this is the temperature variation by virtue of by virtue of velocity that is why it is called as convection term, that is why it is called as convection term. Okay. What is this? diffusion or what we call as conduction. Okay. So, usually in you know, all the equations in the undergraduate level for the energy equation, we would not be writing these two terms. In next couple of slides, I will be saying why. Okay. For now, let us call this as, this is called as pressure term. People also call this as noise term noise term. Next is viscous dissipation term, viscous dissipation term. Why is it called viscous dissipation? If you go back, what is it consisting of? All velocity gradients only followed by viscosity. So, it is the viscous dissipation. These two terms are important only for high speed flows. I will show you through non dimensionalization why it is so. You have a these two terms we will take. So, I think we are now clear of each term. Now, let us non dimensionalize this. Yes. Now, we will use principle of similarity. What is principle of similarity? This is my energy equation. This is my energy equation. I am going to non dimensionalize every length term. It can be x or y by some characteristic length l. Okay. And u star by some characteristic velocity. If it is internal flow, it will be average. If it is external flow, it will be u infinity. Okay. And pressure term by rho u square, rho v square and t by t minus t s upon t infinity minus t s. If I non dimensionalize this each term, each term. Okay. So, if I non dimensionalize this each term, I will end up I will not go through the algebra, okay. it is too lengthy, it is just substituting. That is to tell you what will I get for uh, let us say, now let us say if I take one of the terms rho C p u del t by del x, let us do now, all of you do now, so that you know when you go back home how to do it. So, rho C p there is, it is rho C p only, what should I replace u with? u star equal to u by v. So, u will be getting replaced by u star into v. So, similarly, t star was t minus t s upon t infinity minus t s. So, what will be del t by del x? It will be del t star into t infinity minus t s upon del x star upon l. Is that okay? So, like that I have done for like that I have done for each and every term. It is not okay? Some problem is there Mangesh? Upon l why did I get? x star I have replaced x I have replaced by x star into l 
L is constant, that is why I have taken it out. Is that okay? Yeah. Good. Today you are in comfort zone, you are asking everything. I am happy about it. Okay. So now, now if I non dimension this is what the non dimensional parameter will look like. Let us write this equation. Let us write this. Come on. If we non dimensionalize, what is that I get? U star del T star by del X star plus V star del T star by del Y star equal to 1 upon R E P R into del square T by del square T by what do you expect? Del X star squared plus del square T by T star, you are right del square t star by del del y star square plus E c which is called as Eckert number, Eckert number. Many of you have used the book Eckert and Drake, I saw in your syllabus that Eckert only is this Eckert. Okay. So, Eckert into U star del p star by del x star plus v star del p star by del y star plus of plus of phi star into Eckert by Reynolds number. Okay. What is Eckert number? Let us write each term. What is Reynolds number? Rho v l by mu we know this. What is Prandtl number? I am just reminding mu C p by k, I would not like to remember like this, rather I would like to remember as nu by alpha for reasons very obvious now after Professor Arun spent spending so much time on importance of Prandtl number. And Eckert number is V squared upon C p into T infinity minus T s. Okay. Now, now let us stop here. What is the left hand side term we said in this equation? What does it represent? What does it represent sir? What does the left hand side of this equation represent? It is pressure term, convection term, what it is? It is convection term. Now, what is the second term representing? That is this term representing this is diffusion or the conduction, but what are the non dimensional numbers associated with the conduction term? <coughs> Reynolds number and Prandtl number. Now, that means, if I vary Reynolds number and Prandtl number, this term also becomes important, okay, these two terms. Now, next is, what is this? Eckert number. What is this term? By the way, pressure term. This is the pressure term and this is the viscous dissipation term, this is also having Eckert number. What is Eckert number? Eckert number is V squared upon C p into T infinity minus T s. Now, let us calculate Eckert number for a velocity of 10 meters per second. If the velocity is 10 meters per second and C p of air is 1050 okay, and typically our temperature differences are of the order of when I am heating or cooling, let us say they are of the order of 10 degree Celsius, T infinity and T s. What is Eckert number? Reducing to 10 squared upon 1050 into 10. So, it will be of the order of 0 0.01 or 10 to the power of minus 3, yeah, 1000 upon 100 upon 1000 into 10, let me take like that, 1050 let me make it as 1000. So, what do I get? Not 10 to the power of minus 3, it is 10 to the power of minus 2. So, what does it, what does it mean? This is just to show, what does this mean? Because I said that, I, we usually do not take these two terms. What One is the pressure term, another one is the viscous dissipation. These two terms in the energy 
energy equation, we do not take these two terms. Why? Can now anyone answer this question? Very small for low speed flows, subsonic flows, incompressible flows. It becomes only important in compressible flows, that is high speed flows. You take a Mach number of let us say 1 or 2. If you take a Mach number of 2, what will be the velocity? Mach number 2 means velocity of sound in air is 330 meters per second, roughly 330 into 2 is 660. Okay. Let us take 1000, let us take 1000 velocity, because Mach 4 is not at all a wrong Mach. Because when, when, when my space shuttle is landing back, what is its velocity? What will be Mach 7, Mach 8, it easily goes. So, 1000 is not an um, number thrown out of the world, it is very much applicable to the real life world for high speed flows. If I take 1000 squared, 1000 squared divided by 1000, in fact, T infinity minus T s also will be very high. Okay. Uh, it will be very high, as high as 500 to 600. Okay. You can compute, how can you compute what will be the temperature? You can compute no T naught equal to or H naught equal to H plus V squared by 2. So, T naught equal to T plus V square divided by 2 C p. Okay. So, anyway, I have just got digressed. The point is, the, the temperature will be very high and this V square divided by C p into T infinity minus T s will be significantly large. I cannot afford to neglect any more these two terms, which is the pressure term. Why it is called noise term, perhaps now you can understand. Why it is called noise term? Because it creates noise and noise is created at high speed. Okay. Flame, you are taking a blowing torch. Uh, sorry flame torch, oxyacetylene welding torch, let us say, it is a very high speed velocity. So, their noise term is very important, but for all incompressible flows, this term is not these two terms, that is the pressure term and the viscous dissipation term are not important. I hope I have answered your question. V squared yeah, by yeah, C p yeah. delta t, where does it come from? <laughs> Kinetic energy, okay. What, what is denominator? Heat supply. Where is heat supplied coming here? Actually, I have given the I, have, I am showing the equation so that you can get the clue. But who is generating that temperature? When it is coming, that that high speed flows, high speed flows. The kinetic energy gets transformed into thermal energy. Okay, I take this example all the time. Kalpana Chawla died because that one of the tiles flew off and the because of thermal energy or the friction, the wall temperature shot up and it caught fire. Okay. So, that is that's this. So, it is how much of this kinetic energy is getting transformed into thermal energy is being represented by my Eckert number. Eckert number. That's, that's the that is the uh, physical significance of Eckert number. Yeah. One we said in the numerator kinetic energy, in the denominator that is thermal energy. Hmm. Now you can understand. Lower dissipation of kinetic energy. Lower dissipation of heat to kinetic energy, right? Smaller. So V squared by two is smaller compared to C p delta T. Frictional heating, maybe we can say frictional heating is less. Okay. So, that is how we need to understand this. It becomes very important if you are working in high speed flows. These two terms are, they will create completely, they will change the things completely. In fact, H definition also will change. Let us not get into that. So, that is that is the importance of the energy equation. I think, I think we have understood this. Yes. Yes. When we are having the macro size uh, dimensions, but if suppose we are working with the micro and uh, mini channels type of dimensions, should we ignore these two terms? Mm, their rarefaction comes into picture. Their rarefaction, yes. If there we have to, if there, there, we have to there we have to include these two. Even if it is a small yes. less velocity flow. Less velocity. 
because why I have to include there? When I say rarefaction, what does it mean? Density variations come, in, come into picture, density variations. See, last two terms are coming because of what? Let, let me let me clarify, let me clarify. I, I am clear now how to reach you. This pressure term and the viscous dissipation term came into picture in high speed flows, high speed flows. It is very clear, right? In high speed flows, what is the character of high speed flows? <laughs> high speed is gained because of lot of compressibility, that is because of density variation. Again in rarefaction, what is rarefaction? I am only working at low pressures, but there also again my density is varying. That itself suggests that these two terms are, we, 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 it depends on the fluid. It depends on the fluid. Which fluid you are handling? If it is water, yeah. if it is water, these two terms Even are if important. It is air. No, if it is air, rarefaction will come into picture in micro channel. No, sir. When we are defining the Norsen number, that is the value is less than 0 0.1. Correct. So, the rarefaction effect will not come into the picture. No, if the, I understand what you are trying to say is if then whether we are in slip flow or again in if the Nudson number is very high, mm -hmm. of course. We are not reaching everyone. I am trying to reach only this guy, but that is okay because he has asked me. So, Nudson number is high only, rarefaction comes into picture. Mm. Is that right? So, if Nudson number, if I am operating for high Nudson numbers, high means how high? Typically 0 0.15, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. For that case, these two terms are indeed important. I cannot relegate them, neglect them. But as you said, if it is air only, Nudson number comes into picture. If I am operating water in a micro channel, are density variations there? Are density variations there? No, then these two terms are not important. So, I cannot generalize in one shot and say that for micro channels these two are important. It is specific to the fluid. Yeah, you can say other two terms oh, are yeah. important. Their but velocities are quite less. That is the way you have to Mass point. flow rates are of the order of <coughs> centimeter cube per minutes. Mangesh knows well because incidentally. Uh, one of our student works on earlier he was working on rarefied gas dynamics. So, that is how I am little familiar with that. Okay. So, now, now let us come back to our, we will try to non dimensionalize, we non dimensionalize only the energy equation. What are the non dimensional numbers we arrived at? We will forget here afterwards high speed flows. We got Reynolds number and Prandtl number. Similar non dimensionalization if I do for <coughs> continuity and momentum equation. How did I get this momentum equation? How did I get this momentum equation quickly? I have not, I have not written all the terms, if you carefully see there. Continuity, this is steady, let me remind you, steady two dimensional incompressible flow. Let us write those terms, steady, it is written right. No, I just want to get it registered in their minds. Steady incompressible two dimensional flows. Steady incompressible two dimensional flows. What will be my continuity equation? Del u by del x plus del v by del y equal to 0. What is my <coughs> x momentum equation? Here it is there for those guys who do not remember. U steady del u by del t is not there. U del u by del x plus V del u by del y equal to minus of 1 by rho or maybe I can okay minus 1 by rho del p by del x plus nu into del squared u by del x squared plus del squared u by del y squared. Let us stop for a minute here. What is what is the scale of u? To what scale u would be? Let me take flow over a flat plane. Let me take a flat plate and let me take flow over a flat plate, which is having a velocity u infinity. What will be the scale of u? u is having a scale of x direction velocity. Scale means it is of the order of, not exactly 2 meters means 2 meters. It will be of the order of 1.5, 1.6. So, u is of the order of u infinity. What is the order of x? 
the length is L. So, u infinity upon L is the scale of del u by del x. Now, these two terms should be there means, what will be the scale of v? I do not know the scale of v. Let the scale of v be v only. What will be the scale of y? What is the scale of y? Boundary layer thickness delta. So, what is the scale of v now? u infinity delta by L. Okay? Now, now let us see what is this, let us put the scales of each term, you want to tell something? Scale. scale. Can anyone, okay. what am I trying to say? We know that u is very high, v will be higher or smaller than u, v, velocity in the word, it will be small, all of us register. The question is how small is what we are asking. So, it is very easy to see that u is of the order of u infinity, v I do not know how small it is. How small it is? Definitely I can see the scale of x and y. x is of the order of length of the plate and y is of the order of boundary layer thickness. So, now v is of the order of it is smaller by delta by L compared to u infinity. So, now let us see the term of each scale of each term. What will be the scale of left hand first term? u infinity into del u. What is the scale of that? u infinity by del x scale will be L. So, what about that means? I get u infinity <laughs> squared by L. Now, what is the scale of the next term? What is the scale of v? v u infinity delta by L and what is the scale of u? u infinity by delta. So, delta delta cancels out and I get, what is that I get? u infinity squared by L. What does this mean? Both are coming u infinity squared by L. What does this mean? Both are of the same order. I cannot afford to throw any one. Both are important. Both are important. Now, del p by del x, del p by del x will let us keep it as it is, let us not worry about that. Okay? Now, what about del p by del x, I do not know the scale, so I am not bothered about that. What is the scale of del squared u by del x squared nu into, what is the scale of del squared u by del x squared? u infinity upon x squared is L. <coughs> what about next term? nu u infinity by delta square. So, are these two, how do you compare both of them? Second term can be? Second term is very large, because delta is very small compared to L. So, I can neglect this. Is that okay? That is what precisely is being done in the this equation. I am going to digress a little bit and I will get to show you how to get the delta in terms of Reynolds number from this equation. Okay, maybe I will do that when we do the external flows because for that I need to throw del p by del x. Yeah. I have not yet told. Fine. Uh, what happens to the y momentum equation? Ha. You have not written that. I have not written, that is right. I have not written here y momentum equation. X direction, v is very small compared to u. So, it will not have that much weightage compared to x momentum equation. So, that is why y momentum equation is completely thrown off. Is that okay? We will come to the pressure gradient when we handle external flows. For now, this is enough. Okay, I consciously I have not put that. You are right. What you said is right. Okay, so now these are the boundary conditions. There are no slip boundary conditions and constant wall temperature. I have taken. That's okay. Now, if I non-dimensionalize them, the same way what we did here, it is easy to non-dimensionalize because the terms are compact. So, what do I see in the momentum equation? Reynolds number. What do I see in the energy equation? Reynolds and Francis. What does this mean? 
I will ask you one. I will ask you one thing. I, I this time only I got the trick how to reach that. Moody's chart. What is that you plot in Moody's chart? I am coming off, but it's fine. In Moody's chart, what what versus what you plot? Friction factor versus Reynolds number. Why don't I plot? Why doesn't parental number come in there? Why doesn't parental? Do I friction factor is plotted against Reynolds number. Why is it plotted in against Reynolds number? If I do measurements with Reynolds number, with, with water and if I am doing measurements with water, I can take the F for given Re and get the pressure drop. Let us say I have done that experiment and get the friction factor. Do I have to again do it with air or if I am doing again with oil, should I be doing again with oil? That is, I am asking again with the Modi's chart, F and R is only there, P R is not there. Question is why? No, the trick is answer is here. Answer is here. No, no, no one, I have not reached anyone. I am, I will wait for some time. I will wait for some time. What is non-dimensionalized momentum equation comprising of Reynolds number? So, friction factor is coming from where? No, 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 no. Let us go slow. In order to go in the morning, in the morning we wrote. What did we write in the morning? In the morning, what did we write? I do not want to hurry up. What is velocity the profile? Of friction factor. No, what I have written in the morning, I have written. From velocity profiles, I get gradients and from that I get shear stress and from that I get my pumping force. So, how do I get this velocity gradients? By solving my mass and momentum equation. So, what is the non-dimensional number sitting in my mass and momentum equation? Reynolds number. That means, my friction factor has to be dependent only on Reynolds number. That is precisely the Moody's chart is plotting F versus R e, but then you have to answer me the question. Should I again, can I use that for oil, can I use that for air, can I use that for water? Yes, it is independent of parental number, it is independent of parental number. That is what my non-dimensionalization is teaching me. Okay? That is why we do not have Moody's chart for oil again, water again, air again, we do not have that. You do not have that. Even if you want to find out pressure drop, pressure drop for any unknown configuration, unknown configuration, you do it with the simplest possible fluid or blower, whatever facilities you have, you do with that fluid that is valid for all fluids. That is coming from my non-dimensionalized parameter. But is it true for is heat transfer coefficient independent? So, what is my energy equation telling? Temperature distribution is dependent on Reynolds and Prandtl. That means my H is dependent on Reynolds and Prandtl. So what heat transfer coefficient I measure for air as a fluid is not valid for oil or water. If my fluid is changing, I have to sit down and do my measurements again. That is what this non-dimensionalization is telling. You want to add something? So, is that okay? Did I reach you? This is very, very important. For this work only, Professor Nasselt got his professorship, which is what is embedded in all textbooks and we read it. I think we need to spend ample time with students on this concept, on this concept, because this is what is very important when they are planning their experiments. Even if you are running fluent, it does not make sense. Again to calculate pressure drop, if you have generated pressure drop for air, again to do it with water until I have this concept embedded in my mind. So, this dimensional similarity is going to tell me when to use which dimensionless number. Is that okay? Any questions I can take, I can stop and take because this is important. Okay? Fine. No, it is okay. 10 more again. Yeah. Yeah. 
I am not going to take any question on Dictus Bolter. I am going to spend ample time on internal flows. I am no, I am today very disciplined, but that does not mean that I am not going to take questions, but I am going to take questions, but I am going to time it so that my effort to reach you is going to decrease. Okay, that is my point. Okay. So, now, now what am I doing is, this is the non-dimensional, same thing whatever I told, I am telling that if I am doing for two different configurations, whether water or air, all that I need to do is Reynolds number I have to keep constant and Prandtl number I have to keep constant for temperature and for velocity I need to keep only the Reynolds number same, that is all it is. So, now there is another thing what is called as C f. So, maybe, maybe we can skip this, okay. here I think I, need, I cannot afford to skip because C f definition comes here and actually Nusselt number definition comes here. Okay. So, non dimensionalization, non dimensional u star is a function of what? See this equation, u star is a function of x star, y star and Reynolds number, Reynolds number, yes. If I take d p by d x, I am not taking, d p by d x, I am not taking because if it is a flow over a flat plate, pressure gradient will be there only in internal flows and pressure gradient will not be there in external flows. I will answer why when we reach external flows, okay. why d p by d x is 0 for external flows. It is very easy to show, we will show that, but if d p by d x is not there, then my velocity profile u star is a function of x star, y star and r e l. What is shear stress? mu del u by del y at y equal to 0. If I non dimensionalize this for u and y, u star and y star, what do I get? Mu v by l. So, what is this del u star by del y star? From this, I can write that it is a function of x star and r e l. Why y star is not there? Because I am taking it as y star equal to 0 only. So, you have mu v by l f 2 of x star r e l. Now, if I non dimensionalize this c of x equal to tau wall upon rho v squared by 2, if I substitute this, what do I get here? 2 upon rho v l in the numerator mu. So, that is 2 by Reynolds. That means what? What is that I get? 2 by Reynolds number, which is a function of x star and Reynolds number. That means what? c of x is a function of location and the Reynolds. This is the inference we did intuitively already. I told the Moody's chart example, this is this is Moody's chart na? C f x. So, that is for internal flow where there is nothing like x star, but for flow over a flat plate from location to location my friction factor local is going to change. Is that understood? Similarly, let us do for temperature flow. T star equal to G x star y star r e l p r. H is what professor has defined as k del t del y. If I non dimensionalize that, I am going to get k by l del t star by del y star at y star equal to 0. So, what is Nusselt number? H, H l by k. So, if I substitute that here, I am going to get del t star by del y star at y star equal to 0. What is this function of? What is this function of? T star is a function of? Go back, go back to the equation, do not have to hurry up. T star is a function of? Reynolds number, Prandtl number and x star. Why y star is not there? Again because I am taking del t star by del y star at y star equal to 0. So, what does this represent? Nusselt number is a function of Reynolds number and Prandtl number. Yes, and and location, and location. Is that understood now? So now I guess we know how to utilize non-dimensionalization. Okay, so that is about the power about power of non-dimensionalization parameters. Okay, that is how actually now after understanding this correlations flow, how do I know that? And you, you, you we have plethora of correlations, hundreds of correlations. All the correlations are of the form of constant into r e to the power of x, p r to the power of some n. Why do I know that? How do I know that I should be taking it that way? Because in the previous non-dimensionalization, 
I have come to know that my Nusselt is a function of Reynolds and Prandtl. We have to emphasize our students that this is what it is. That is why we write correlations in this form. Dittus Bolter professor said that is 0 0.023 R e to the power of 0.8 P R to the power of either 0.3 or 0.4 depending on heating or cooling. How on earth Dittus Bolter knew that he has to take that form? He knew it because it came from Nusselt's non dimensionalization. Had Nusselt not told that Dittus and Bolter could not could not have come up with that correlation. Okay. Yes, Mangesh. Then we taught the students about this correlation hmm. uh, that it is coming from the Buckingham spy theorem. Huh, no, I would say Buckingham spy theorem is little difficult. Buckingham spy theorem, I would say it is difficult because it is based on intuition. How do you say that my T star is dependent on mu, C p and k? It is, see that was hydrodynamics, that was hydrodynamics. When during time of hydrodynamics, when Buckingham's and Reynolds did the analysis, their friction factor and Reynolds number, when they drew that Nikuradze did those experiments, he had no idea of Navier-Stokes equations. That was indeed done by on the basis of your Buckingham's by theorem only whatever you told. That was hydrodynamics, that was not called as fluid dynamics. After deriving Navier-Stokes equations and after deriving energy equation, after Nusselt showed the dimensional similarity only, our correlations have flowed in. So, I would recommend that we should not show it through Buckingham's by theorem, but we should show it through Nusselt's dimensional similarity. Because it is obvious, no, no, I do not have to make any assumptions to take which parameter and which not parameter into my picture. It is quite difficult for energy equation. Why? Because historically it is like that. Historically it has come like this. That is the reason. But sir, methodology is same in both the cases. Yeah, but there there is into, you know the answer, that is why you are able to do it there. But here I do not know the answer, still I am going to arrive at the same answer. That That is the difference between the two. See, how, how to teach a student when you are taking Buckingham's theorem on the right hand side, these parameters only I should take. If, if he asks you, let me ask you, why I cannot take k for friction factor? In my friction factor dimensional analysis, if he asks you, why k and c p are not taken, how will you answer him? It is not possible. With this you can, With this you can answer. That is the power of dimensional symmetry. Okay. So, I would historically it came, we studied it is fine, but that is not the approach we are supposed to follow to teach the students. It is through di writing differential equations and writing and non dimensionalizing them. You attempt this for any of your PhD problem, it will work for you, it will work for you. That is what is called as formulation. No? Any problem, first write them in the differential form dimension, non-dimensionalize them, you get the dimensionless numbers. Any problem, you take any problem, flow through a pipe or droplet spray, you take two phase flow, you take any problem, first thing is write the differential equations, non-dimensionalize them, you get the dimensionless number, then you can plan your experiments to arrive at this type of correlations. You change the Reynolds numbers, you change the Prandtl, then it is mass production, but the thought process is this. So, there is another very interesting thing, very, very interesting thing, but very simple, very simple. Okay. Now, I have what I have done is, I have thrown the pressure term. If you just see first two terms, what is that I have done? What is the first equation? What is the first equation? Momentum equation. And I have thrown del p by del x, because this is valid for a flat plate. Okay. Again, I am postponing why del p by del x equal to 0. Professor is going to answer us that. Next, the energy equation. In the energy equation, I have made Prandtl number equal to 1. Actually, here R e L into P R was there. So, I will make P R equal to 1. Do you see anything, anything magical is there between these two equations? Those two look same. If you watch carefully, even boundary conditions also will look same. So, the solution of 1 should be the solution of the other. That is what is called as Reynolds analogy. So, tau s equal to mu v. So, if you just see that, the same thing, I am not going to harp on that. C of x is a function of x star and R e l. Nusselt is a function of x star R e l. Now, P r, if it is made 1, these two functions are going to be same. 
So, C f x into R e L by 2 is equal to nothing. So, if I write n u by R e into P r, n u by R e into P r, P r is not there, P r is 1. So, that is n u by R e into P r is what? Stanton number. So, Stanton number becomes equal to C f x by 2. What is the beauty of this equation? What is the beauty of this equation? If you measure C f x, you can get the heat transfer distribution. In fact, I came across a wonderful uh, application of this concept by one of my colleague, Professor Meninges. He uses reverse for compressible flow over a flat plate in shock tube. He measures the heat transfer coefficient and he calculates the frictional drag by stand from Stanton number to C f x and it works. For compressible flow also it works. Okay. So, it is a very, very strong equation. Please do not relegate this as only mathematical or only bookish, it works in real life. It works in real life. Okay. For flow or a flat plate, whether it is compressible or incompressible, it works. It works because measuring pressures fast is difficult, but measuring temperatures fast is easy for compressible flow. So, that is why he measures heat transfer coefficient. The point why I took that example is that it is strong it is strong even in pipes even in subcooled flow we have seen that by and large it works by and large it works of course with some variations so with this i think i will stop maybe i will not handle this colburn analogy i will leave it like that because for the paucity of time i think i will stop here you can go through this yourself for colburn analogy